This is gonna be such a good sister to sister. Roxanne, someone wrote, I just found out my 16 year old daughter is sexually active. What do I do? 16 years old, nothing. What about the mature woman that's having an emotional affair? Oh my gosh. Find out what the sisters think coming up next. Welcome to Sister to Sister. We are so glad that you've joined us from wherever you are. Welcome, welcome. You're joining five women. We are opinionated and godly, and we answer questions, honestly, that you send us that from the world, but we answer from a biblical point of view. Today's questions are from the world a little bit. Where do you hear? Okay, someone writes, my mother-in-law calls me every day, and I I wish my mother-in-law could because she's in heaven. I took the calls at first, but then I started letting them go to voicemail. She was calling me too much. She brought it up and said she was hurt. Oh dear. And she was only trying to get to know me better, but I just don't think we'll ever mesh because she's calling me too much. Oh my gosh. Amy. Well, my mother-in-law actually calls me every day as well. I know. And I love it. And I wouldn't have it any other way. You know, I can't answer the okay, calls you don't get all to the time. This question, then. No. <laughs> but she too happy. I want to offer this perspective yes. that yes. when I got married, I, I told Buck, where you go, I will go. Where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your right. God will be my God. But that was actually Ruth talking to Naomi, right. the mother in law. Oh. And so I think that we better hold up on this. You know, my mother-in-law's in all of my business and you know, she's, we, we work together like a great big family in church and in life. She cares for my children as much as I do. I would say equally, it, it is strange how God does that. And you have this huge support system. Like this woman wants to get to know you. Why not, why can't you talk to her on the phone? Right. Okay, right. But, there, but that doesn't help this person asking this question because this person <laughs> needs boundaries, okay? <laughs> who, who needs boundaries? The, the person asking the question, I don't think we're gonna have that kind of relationship. I don't talk to anybody on the phone every day. Not even my husband when he travels out of state. I yeah. just don't. Some oh, wow. people, Ooh. some We're people, some yeah. people talk on the phone every day, mm -hmm. like you mm -hmm. and your mother-in-law and your unicorns right. and rainbows. Right. And some people <laughs> don't. Oh, okay, I'm just saying. Just it's just it, it's just different personalities, and it's okay. It yeah. is okay. Yeah. I think and so, so it's okay to set boundaries and just to say like that's that is not me and I, I I don't have the capacity to do that and that doesn't mean I don't love you and that I don't want your wisdom mm -hmm. and that I don't want to have a close relationship it's just I can't do this. I can't do that. So I think it's a matter of communicating mm -hmm. and saying, I'm yeah. not rejecting you as a person yeah. or my mother-in-law or our relationship, but mm -hmm. I can't do this. Mm. Um, two things. One, bringing it up in a family gathering is manipulative because the mother-in-law did that. Yep. You don't do that. Mm -hmm. And two, I have a solution. Marco Polo. It is an app. I love Marco Polo. It is wonderful. It is an app. And what you do is you message each other back. It's like voicemails, but it's a video message. message. So your mother-in-law can talk to you to her heart's content. She can leave a 30 minute video message saying everything she wants. I match socks today. I cut watermelon. I want to tell you every single thing I did today. And then you can respond when it makes sense for you. There you go. Well, I don't do Marco Polo. But <laughs> you know what? If your oh, daughter-in-law, so if your daughter-in-law suggested that, for, and that was a good way Maybe. for you to keep, then yeah. you might do it. That's right. Well, I okay. gotta say one thing. 
<laughs> they didn't watch my big fat Greek wedding. Oh, <laughs> because that's true. you know what? That's right. They every it's not just the mother, it's everybody it's in everybody's business. Well, Armenians and Greeks and the Jewish people, we're all we're all kind of like yeah. that also. And you know, the scripture says, be at peace with all men. Yeah. So you know, and the other thing is about the mother-in-law. My my daughter and my daughter is so good to her her mother-in-law. The mother-in-law is good to her. But I see this spark that occurs because they love the same man. That's right. Yeah, that's good. That's the right. son. That's good. And the husband, and right. there is a mutual way. I think Amy mm -hmm. got it mm -hmm. to click. Yes. On a mutual ground yes. about things. My daughter's mother-in-law could say things and do things to help her out. Yes, yeah. ma'am. So, you know, you're not using your mother-in-law, mm -hmm. but, you know, live at peace with her and find yeah. a way to balance Agreed. the relationship yeah. and then go watch my big fat Greek wedding. There you, you go. You don't got nothing. <laughs> your mother-in-law has nothing on those That's right. people, That's right? right. I'm going to move to this next one because it does affect all of us and you watching who wrote this. <laughs> I'm 50 years old, trying to stay in shape. <laughs> but I'm at a stage of my life, I just don't have the body of my 20-year-old self. Welcome to reality, <laughs> ma'am. Um, I find I'm jealous of any woman when my husband talks to them. But I don't believe my husband. But he says he only has eyes for me. So that was a long question, but here we go. Well, that's funny, because in my world of unicorns and rainbows, <laughs> yeah. I am 50 as well. <laughs> and... I love it. I, I absolutely love 50. And I mean, 50 is where you know who you are, you know where you're going, mm -hmm. and now you've got a little bit of money to do it, and you've got a stride in life, and it's you still have energy. I mean, it is a great age. And I would just say this is a time to lock in and be really secure in who you are at this age and stage and season of your life. And plus remember that that man is not wired for 220. Right. Flo, what would you say to the, <laughs> for 220, I love it. What would you say to the woman who's saying, I, I feel jealous? Uh, jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Mm, so yes. I would want to know what is being assassinated in her soul. Why is okay. it that she feels jealous? I mean, there's nothing wrong with you wanting to, I think we should maintain, this is our, this is our earth suit. This is our how we get, this is how we operate legally in the earth realm. So we do need to take care of our bodies. You know, we're, a lot of us are involved in ministry and, you know, I don't want to get up every day and exercise and do this or that, but there's certain things I need to do, right? Um, but I should be doing it not for the reason of trying to match the highlight reels that yeah. I maybe see in the media mm -hmm. or the highlight reels that I have created in my own mm -hmm. mind. It, or am I trying to capture my 20-year-old body back? Mm -hmm. And if so, why? Right. Am mm -hmm. I not good enough for myself at 50? Mm -hmm. Then the other thing is, because I don't trust myself is how I see this. Wow. Mm. I, there's something going on in me. Now I don't trust him. Wow. So I, he, when he oh, says to me, up. I only have <laughs> eyes for you, I'm thinking he can't because I don't feel good enough mm, about right. myself. So it's self-image, wow. not necessarily I think that that, that, that I think wow. that, that de good. definitely um, plays, plays a role. And then one more thing that people probably aren't going to like, but it's still true whether you like it or agree with it or not, <laughs> We do have eyes and we do recognize when something's good, good looking. We recognize God's handiwork. You just talked about creation and feeding the koi and doing this. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna tell me <laughs> when, when the cable guy comes and he's nice looking, you, uh, you don't see him? Quit lying, yes you do. You see him, you know he's nice looking, you know. <laughs> But you don't ponder. You don't just stay there and, and, and let your imagination yeah, go good. somewhere right. with that's it. Right. So I think her, her husband, when he's, she didn't say, at least I didn't get this out of it, that like he's talking to people, flirting with them or anything. He's just having conversation. Mm -hmm. So for me, that's an internal issue in her. What do you have? One of you come back on I this. I just like the term earth suit. I want yeah. to use yeah. that yeah. in some way. You look it's like so you're wearing an earth suit. <laughs> yeah, she does. <laughs> on a rocket. <laughs> nando, nando. Oh, oh gosh. gosh. Yeah. You know what? I you know this this is a crazy scripture. And you're going to think it doesn't apply. 
Proverbs 27 <laughs> says, whoever guards the fig tree will eat its fruits. What? Okay, I'll explain. Yeah. <laughs> all right, please. So, first of all, you ask please a friend. explain. Or you ask the Lord, search me, Lord. Am That's I right. jealous? That's right. Am I just seeing things because I'm insecure, like Flo says, mm -hmm. about myself? Mm -hmm. Or am I really perceiving something that I better catch really quickly? Right. Come on. So, a friend will tell you, the Lord will reveal. I had this situation with a girlfriend that people were saying, she's talking behind your back. I'm like, nah, 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 nah. I, so I finally said, Lord, show me. If it's true, I don't want to believe it, show me. Well, a text came that she meant for somebody else oh, and I no. got it. But the Lord, I asked him. Okay, I asked him and he showed That's me. Terrible. So listen, to the, it happens. Oh, people, people are talking about yeah. you all the time. Yeah. It's okay, but you got to guard your heart. Guard your so heart. whoever guards the fig tree it's will leave its okay. fruit. I mean, it's okay that you re revealed it, you work with it. So yeah. now she's a friend. We, we, we went face to face with it yeah. and we got it out because we're friends. That's right. So if he's really looking at somebody else, which people do, mm -hmm. nip it quickly. That's right. Oh, Guard boy. the fig tree and you'll eat its okay, fruit. Okay, well, speaking of a fig tree and guarding. <laughs> I don't think she got it. But I didn't. I really didn't yeah. get the fig tree. But here's what guard I do want to know. Guard your husband's. Uh, let oh, he's know. the fig. You're not doing the right thing Wait. here. It's bothering yeah. me. Wait, yeah. the husband is the fig. Okay. Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> he is? I don't know. I, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's 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 the okay. question. All right. All right. Someone else. You people. Somebody to write in to Rob and our producer. You people try. with these questions. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Here's what else you wrote. I am a Christian. I had an emotional affair. <laughs> this is not a funny question. Do I tell the fig terrible. or not? Do I tell my husband okay. the fig? Right. I know it would hurt yeah. him. Okay, this is really bad. She had an affair. Do I tell the husband it will really hurt? It's over. I messed up. I, I don't know if I should confess. Okay. <laughs> what you Unicorns got? aside. Okay, yes. And uh, Koi and the... So, you know, that was great. Okay. <coughs> I'm going to say this about it. Please. Jesus said, even if you look at somebody with lustful mm -hmm. eyes, and as Flo said, mm -hmm. don't keep those eyes there. Go, mm -hmm. go away. <clears throat> she, this emotional fear, and I, I hate to be so, you know, you're going to say I'm too spiritual, whatever. You're on the verge of adultery. Right. All right. That's real. That's so, not spiritual. That's real. Whatever it takes, you will do it again and again because it feels good. And if you don't nip it, whether the Holy Spirit guards you and leads you into something to guard you, mm. you need to be held accountable yes. for your actions because you are going to commit adultery. You are on the road. Mm. The Bible says, Jesus says, it's not just the outward that we do. And that's the beautiful thing about Christianity. It's what's in the heart that he reveals. That's why we can't judge another person because our hearts are just as wicked. They might do it, but we think it. Yeah. So I'm going to say, hold yourself accountable. Should she tell him? All right, that, I'm going to get to that. Okay. If it's a friend that you could trust first, what's it say? Confess your sins one to another that you may be healed. Now, don't go telling everybody, but tell someone that you can be accountable to. And then God, there's no quick answer to everything. God will reveal to you if his heart could take it. Right. God will That's reveal good. to you the That's proper time good. to do it. He <laughs> might slip and fall. And you might say, I understand because this is what I did. Don't feel so bad. God will give you the time when you're supposed to say, if you are, I'm not going to tell you to right. say it or not, but you've got wow. to tell somebody else so that you are accountable. Wow. Does That's anybody else that, think? That, that, is, that was really, really good because you have to look at what is guiding me. Is it wisdom? Is it fear? Is it the Holy Spirit? And to your point, mm -hmm. just because uh, I, don't, I don't need to be redundant, you, you've done an excellent job on that. But just an example, and I think I've shared this before, I know a couple that they were, in the, they were having an affair, they went to their pastor, and the pastor then called each of their spouses and told. Mm -hmm. So you know that that got ugly real yeah. quick, right? Did they want him so, to do that? 
I guess not. <laughs> so, the, the um, you know, that got ugly real quick. So your point about who I can confide in makes all the difference in the world because honest, God has set everything up for us. Honest confession is good for the soul. The challenge is who am I confessing to? And I, I don't think that, you know, we live in a society today where discretion is not really honored yes. or held in high school. Yeah. We tell everything and people just think that that's, oh, you know, I'm just being real. I'm just, I'm just yeah. telling the truth. But that's some good. things you need to yes. use some Please. discretion with. Yes. And yeah. like, I love what you said about, is he going to be able to handle right. that? Right. Because my love for him or her I don't want to hurt and cause them more pain. That's right. You know, but I do need to deal with what's going on inside of me that opened me up to this. Yeah. Why am I lusting after this person? Maybe needs aren't being met at home some way or another. Oh my God. And as Corey always talks about, they can't read your mind. Communication is essential to life. Right. Oh my goodness. I think you should stay right there because I'm looking at my next questions. Oh, we're going to do that after you have your coffee break. Stay right there. Oh, we're back. We're back. <laughs> this where do you where do you hear this one? You who wrote it. We just found out that our 16-year-old daughter is sexually active, and I'm not sure how to approach her about it. Um, we believe in waiting till marriage to have sex. She knows that. What in the world do we do? You have teenage girls. What do I you do? do. Um, I think one thing that I realized is that for a long time, I thought, like, sex before marriage is, like, the worst possible thing that could ever happen. And, like, I gave so much power to that. And I just thought, like, it was just, when my kids were younger, I just was, like, so worried about that. Like, it was just, I was hyper-focused on it. And, and then I thought about it, and I was just like, you know, a lot of us adult Christians messed up in that area. And, and we're okay, Amen. Amen. you know. There's grace and forgiveness there. Yeah. And, you know, if our kids mess up, they can be okay, too. Like... It's not the end all and be all of all sins. It's, it's a sin, okay? But it's like not life ending sin, okay? And so I just, I had to have like a shift in my brain about that because I really was so hyper focused on that. And um, I, I really had to have a shift in my brain about that because it was just like something I was just like, oh my gosh. Like, this is going to be the end of their lives if they mess up in this area, you know. And, um, you know, it, it's a sin, but it's how we react. That's right. You know, if, if we overreact to anything that they do, if we, it, it, that's just going to lead to more deception and more, mm -hmm. you know, problems and more. We want our kids to come to us. That's right. When they struggle with something or if they, if they sin or if they are, you know, if they're having an issue with something, we don't want them to hide from us. That's right. And so our reactions are a huge part of that. And so that was a learning curve for me as a parent and, you know, something I hope younger parents can realize. Our reactions are a huge part of that. Does anybody else just, have I anything just, on this? I just this? love, 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 love Corey for that because I, when, we see, when I seen this question, my mind flashed back to we had a question like this or similar before years yeah. back. And I love your heart, like your honesty, like yeah. Yeah, I had to have a mind change, yeah. a, sh yeah. a shift yeah. in our minds. Because when you're younger in the, uh. the Lord, I mean, there's, I definitely, yeah. you know, I was a young parent before I became a more seasoned parent, you know, and my thoughts in, you know, change mm -hmm. about things. I don't know if it was my kid, if it was, well, yeah. then God yeah. gave me some of those kids. Yeah. And then, <laughs> you know, and so, so what, what, I learned, what I have learned to, yeah. to do is, um, it's important for us to be that place of refuge. Yeah. That city yeah. of refuge, yes. right? When things happened um, in, in the Bible, people, like if, if they murdered someone, they had a place that they could go to and be protected. 
Uh, so what am I saying? It's, as you already said, our response. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I have to shift. Yes, I've taught you. This, this is not how we are to live. Right. This is what the word says. Okay, but they've fallen short. So now what do I do? I need to operate from a place of restoration yeah. and we need to enlighten them. You know, God is the giver of life. So if a baby comes out of it, that's not the worst thing, but honey, you could wind up with a disease that you could carry for the rest mm -hmm. of your life. And so those things have to be yeah. made known, you know? And I think that we miss that when we jump on our religious bandwagon. Well, speaking mm -hmm. of, of young people, yeah. What do you do? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just, for the mom, I just want to like give her a hug and just say, I'm so sorry. It just really sucks when something happens and your kid steps into something that they shouldn't and it's not how you raised them and how you taught them or what you were believing for them. And right. it's just like a shock. Mm -hmm. So I would just want to hug the mom and then just say, you also are stronger than you think you are and that you can rise up in wisdom and in grace and with strength and deal with what you need to deal with. Right, mm -hmm. and you know? I'm gonna move to this last question because I think we've co we covered a lot of sex stuff today. So I'm like <laughs> moving on, <laughs> my goodness. Your this, favorite, my, right? <laughs> this question really encompasses all of us. And here's what it says. What is the greatest need that people have today? That's such a good question. You know, this is a rather broad question, it is, I find. It is. And it's so easy to say, what's the greatest need? Everybody needs Jesus. As, yeah. as Norma used to say, everybody needs Jesus. Everybody ought to know. Everybody yes, ought to know who yes. Jesus is. Mm -hmm. And I think we all agree with that. Yeah. But I also think, you know, people have a need to connect like never before. So There's a lot people. of a disconnect. Yes. And, and while I am learning to have a greater respect and appreciation for the media, and I have seen where Google has replaced the elders. Instead of me calling mm -hmm. Aunt Carrie, co you know, Cousin Corey, uh, to find out how do we make that barbecue sauce recipe, I Google it. Mm -hmm. And so that takes away from us spending time That's together and good. traditions being passed down. Um, I think people That's are good. looking to belong, to connect. And again, with the, the, you know, the pros and cons of the media, I must be a certain way to connect. Because yes. the media is dictating to me, I'm allowing it yeah. to dictate yeah. to me wow. what it is and how it is that I should be. People want to be valued. Um, people yes. want to be celebrated and not tolerated. People want to be appreciated. And, and, and I know for me, not being lied to is a big yes. thing for me. I'd rather you just tell me yes. the truth, right. even if I don't like it, because if there's enough relationship, you're saying it to me in love, you know, and it will contribute to my growth. I mean, I think that's so wow. huge because I, I now more than ever, people can be connected yes. with the, you know, social media. And so they think like, oh, I'm so connected, but mm -hmm. they're less Very connected than yeah. ever. You're and right. so I think You're young right. people right. are just feeling this, like, mm -hmm. why, why do I feel so disconnected? And it's, mm -hmm. there's this dichotomy of yeah. like, yeah. well, I, I should be connected, mm -hmm. but I'm not, right. you know, they're connected electronically, but not relationally. And so there's just this really, this emptiness in people and they're really yeah. feeling yeah. it. And it's right. think about when you're at a restaurant and you see a table yes. of people and the kids are all on the phone. Yes. And how I respect a mother who would say, give me that phone, give me that phone, give me, <laughs> and put it over here. And that's it. Hey, listen, we're so glad you were with us today. What a great show. Sister to Sister always explores topics that are important to you. Therefore, they're very important to us. And the question, that last question was, what is the greatest need people have today? And Flo said, Norma Bixler used to say it, and there's a lot of songs about it, and I'm going to say it too. People need Jesus. We'll be right back. We close with a scripture that I have often prayed as a prayer. Listen, Isaiah 26, 
3 and 4. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord himself is the rock eternal. Recently, while cleaning, I fell down eight steps and gouged this hole in the wall with my head. I was screaming and fearing the worst. However, on the way to the hospital, my fear took a back seat to my thankfulness. Amen. Thankful for no unconsciousness. Thankful for no bleeding. Philippians 4 says with prayer and thankfulness, God's perfect peace guards our hearts and minds safe in Christ Jesus. Well, the CT scan came back. I had no head injuries. However, I fractured my arm for all you uh, anatomy people at the radial neck at the elbow. And God reminded me in Romans 14, whether we live or die, or we feel like we're somewhere in between, we are the Lord's. That, that's why I say as iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of a man or a rock sand sharpen each other. What a great testimony to love of Jesus. We'll see you next time.